Okay, now I want it to get into getting started. Now this code I'm going to show you is quite simple, so it'll be useful, I think, for everyone here because either you don't know a lot of code, and so simple code's easy, or you do know a lot of code, but you don't know SMF. So you'll be able to take uh, the simple code I show you and make it more complicated. So first, of course, you have to install OSMF and Flash. Uh, I said it's opensourcemediaframework.com. It's also adobe.com slash go slash OSMF. Go there, download the framework. You need to download the framework. You'll get it as a SWIC. It's osmf.swc. And you will copy it to the correct location depending on which system you are using, Windows or Mac. Again, these slides will be posted. Uh, but it's in the ActionScript 3 libs folder. And then you, when you launch Flash, that SWIC will be accessible as part of your library path inside of Flash. That's what gives Flash the ability to use all the code I'm about to show you. We're ready to build the simplest possible OSMF player. So the basic structure of an OSMF player is what I want to cover before I get into any of the code. There are three objects that are key to any OSMF experience. The first is a media element. That is what it sounds like. It is an element of media. It can be video, it can be images, it can be sound, it can be another SWIFT. It can also be, as I will show in some samples later, what's known as a composite element, meaning a media element could be multiple pieces of video, or three pieces of video, five images, and an audio file. Right? You can create these composite media elements as well as simple media elements. Either way, you need a media element. And what you do with the media element is you tell it to load stuff. Then you have a media player, which controls the playback of a media element. So you will associate a media element with a media player, and then you will tell a media player to play or to stop. Finally, you will have a media container. This is what makes your media visible to the user. So the player is what controls it, and the container is what displays it. And uh, this is what you would use to add to the stage to control the visibility. This is the core structure of any OSMF experience. You have a media element that's played by a media player and displayed by a media container. Now many of you, uh, especially if you're used to coding on the timeline in Flash, will not be used to importing. You may not even know that there are conditions in which you have to import when you're working on the timeline. When you're working on the timeline, the only classes you don't have to import are those that begin with Flash dot. So if you need to work with components like fl.components.button or slider or anything like that, you need to import those. Similarly, OSMF classes begin with org.osmf. They don't begin with flash dot. So when you're working with those, you have to import those, again, even when you're coding on the timeline. So these are the four imports that you're going to need, again, for the simplest possible OSMF player. Next, we are going to want to create a media container. So we create a media container. And then we'll add that media container to our stage. We'll create a media player. So you'll see before we create the media player, var video element equals new video element pointing to a, U, a URL resource wrapping my FLV. I create a new video element, right? I'm not typing in new media element. Remember I said the media element is the core, but a video element is a type of media element. We also have sound elements. We also have image elements. So I'm going to create a new video element. And when I create the new video element, I point it to a URL resource. And the URL resource is just the name of my FLV on the server. Then. I create the new media player, and I tell the media property of the media player which element to point to. Okay, so I've established that linkage. And so taken together, right, the first four lines are our imports. We create the container. We add it to the stage. We create our video element. We add that to the container. We create the media player. We add the video element to the media player. And with that code, that's how we can get the, uh, the video player to work, right? It's just that code. It's roughly the same number of lines of code to get a video to play in Flash, right? If you just use the net connection, the net stream, and the video object. Uh, so we haven't had much code savings yet, but of course, building the most basic video player is probably not what you're going to be using OSMF for. So taking it a step further, controlling playback. 
By default, you may have noticed that the video played. If you don't want the video to play, you would set the auto play property on the media player to false. When that happens, right, it'll load, but it won't play. So what I've done in the next demo that I'll show you is just put a stage event listener for a click event. And uh, when you click, it'll toggle the pause effectively. It'll say, if the media player is playing, pause it, otherwise resume it, or with the command play. Right, so now there's nothing there. So play and pause is what I want. Auto play and then play and pause. Those are key to controlling the media playback. Those were the next steps. So like I said, that was simple, it was clean, it wasn't that hard, but neither was the equivalent with just raw action script, right? You're talking about six lines of code just to do that with raw action script. Let's get into some of the more features. First, this one, uh, media factories might seem a little abstract at first, uh, but I want to cover it because it's, it's in uh, a lot of the following code. In the previous example, you saw that I created a video element directly. I said create a new video element. Uh, when I did that, I had to know that I'm creating a video element as opposed to a sound element or an image element. But what if I don't want my code to care what type of media I'm loading, right? In fact, one of the key benefits of OSMF is that it, the same stuff works, whether it's a video or an image or a sound. Why should I have to, when I'm writing my code, necessarily care? And the answer is you don't. What you can do is uh, utilize a media factory, and you'll tell this to create media elements with a URL, and the media factory will determine what type of media you are trying to, to work with, right? So we have a media element, but it could be a video element, an image element, or a sound element. We'll just point the media factory to a URL, and OSMF will create the correct type of media element for us. Now, this isn't required, but it is actually if you're using plugins, uh, precisely because of this abstraction. So if you're using plugins, you do need to use a media factory. In order to use the media factory, we would need to import the default media factory class. We will create a new media factory. And then instead of saying my video element equals new video element, I'm going to say media element equals media factory dot create media element. And then again, point it to URL resource of my FLV. So this is going to return a video element to me. So I'll be able to, to use it just like I did before but I didn't need to write that in my code. And you'll see in the sample file that that still works. Again, same exact experience. You have layouts, okay? So remember, part of OSMF is to display our media. Displaying it isn't just necessarily throwing it up on the screen. We take more care and consideration with our work. So how does OSMF account for layouts? Well, you'll remember that we have a media container, which is what displays our media. We have a media element, which is what loads our media. There's a connection between the two. In the previous example, we, we had effectively a direct connection. But what we can do is sort of insert an intermediary. It's not really inserting an intermediary, but I like picturing it this way. Because we are having the layout metadata influence how the media element is applied to the media container. So a layout metadata object can account for width, it can account for height, x, y, it can account in absolute terms or in relative terms, make the width 50%, put its x at 20%, okay? So the way that you would work with a layout metadata object is, well, first to create one, var layout equals new layout metadata. On this one, we're going to keep it simple, we're just going to establish its width and height. And then we talk to the media element we call add metadata, and we uh, the first argument is layout metadata dot layout namespace. That's the type of metadata we are applying to the media element, and the second argument is layout, which is the layout metadata object that I created. So all you have to do is create a layout object. It's called a layout metadata object. I'll just call it a layout object. Give it some properties and tag it to the media element. That's the process we're following here. And so now when our media container displays our media element, it will display the media element at 640 by 480. Again, that's what I just showed you in, in that previous example. That's why this video is 640 by 480. 
whereas in the, the simplest possible OSMF player that I showed you first, it, I believe that's uh, 320 by 240.